the footballgameplan.com where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you our 2013 college football preview show. And today we're breaking down the Pac-12 conference. We're gonna take a look at this conference top to bottom, but first, let's start on the recruiting trail to see how well these teams recruited this past off season. UCLA Bruins had the best recruiting class in the Pac-12 this year. They want to get better along the offensive line and they were able to accomplish that getting guys like Kenny Lacey, John Lopez, Kristen Morris coming from Memphis, Tennessee, and a local kid, Alex Redman, out of Los Alamitos, California. And on the defensive side of football, they want to add depth and talent at the linebacker position. Keep an eye on Miles Jack out of Bellevue, Washington, a guy that could see time very early as a freshman. And they also have to replace two starters at the cornerback position, and they signed four outstanding defensive back prospects, led by Priest Willis out of Tempe, Arizona, 6'2", 185 pounds. Here's a guy that's an effective blitzer coming off the edge, but also excels in coverage. A new Solomon is an ideal fit in Rich Rodriguez's spread offensive attack. Here's a guy that has the athleticism, he has the mobility, has the arm and the accuracy. He could push for a starting job as a freshman keeping out on his player should be a good one for the Wildcats. The Sun Devils lack speed and explosiveness on the flanks at the receiver position, so Jalen Strong, a Juco transfer at 6'4", 205 pounds with blazing speed, could be an impact player from day one. He's already penciled in as a starter. New head coach Sonny Dykes has a fine quarterback prospect in Jared Goff, 6'4", 185 pounds. Here's a guy that graduated high school early, is already on campus, and competing for a starting job. Big fan of the athleticism that defensive end Jimmy Gilbert brings to the table for the Colorado Buffaloes and should see time as a freshman to help bolster that defensive front. The Oregon Ducks add another explosive playmaker in the backfield with Thomas Tyner, one of the best running backs in the country that's going to be a part of the rotation, but also could see time as a kickoff returner. The Oregon State Beavers needed help on the interior of their defensive line right away, so they went to the Juco ranks and got an outstanding prospect in Edwin Delva, who slated to start from day one. Quarterback Ryan Burns is your classic Stanford quarterback, a big-bodied guy, 6'5", 225, has the body to add more weight, but here's a guy that can make every throw and also has the athleticism to get out there on boots and waggles. One of my favorite high school prospects in the country is Sua Cravens for USC, 6'3", 250 pounds. His game reminds me a lot of the late, great Sean Taylor. The Utah Utah are a team that does a great job in replenishing their defensive talent. This time, they go to the Juco ranks and land an outstanding cornerback prospect in Davion Orphy, 6 feet, 185 pounds, who's slated to start in the secondary. The Washington Huskies already impressive receiving core just got a lot better with a guy in Demoria Stringfellow, a 6'3", 215-pound speedster that should help Keith Price have a bounce-back season in 2013. Also looks like Mike Leach has found his Michael Crabtree with the Juco transfer and Vince Mayo, 6'3", 220 pounds. Here's a guy that's also penciled in as a starter already. Excellent hands and tremendous run after the catch ability. The Oregon Ducks have the best group of quarterbacks in the Pac-12. You look at Marcus Mariota, he put on a sensational display as a freshman last year, showing the ability to make plays in and out of the pocket. He also have two pretty good backups in redshirt freshmen, Jake Rodriguez and Jeff Lucky. I love what the Sun Devils bring to the table in the backfield with Marion Grice and DJ Foster. Both guys display the natural running skills as well as the ability to be utilized as valuable weapons in the passing game. You add a healthy DeAndre Lewis in the backfield, and now you have the ability to drive defenses crazy. I have to give the nod to the Washington Huskies for the best receiving core in the Pac-12. They're strong at wide receiver with Casey Williams and Jaden Mickens, and at tight end with Austin Safarian Jenkins. Both Williams and Jenkins are legit NFL prospects, and they also add an impressive true freshman to the mix this year in Demoria Stringfellow. The best offensive line goes to the Stanford Cardinal. You look at NFL prospect guard David Yankee as a rock in the middle, as well as solid and dependable seniors in center Khalil Wilkes and Kevin Dancer. You look at right tackle Cameron Fleming. He was a freshman All-American two years ago, and there's a reason why the Cardinal are always ranked amongst the top in rush yards and least sacks given up. When you look at the Sun Devils defensive line, you see a very stout unit with Will Sutton, Jackson Hood, and Devon Coleman. All three guys combined for 21 sacks and 16 and a half TFLs. With size, athleticism, and intelligence, the Cardinals linebacking core is very talented and has quality depth to be considered not only the best in the Pac-12, but arguably in the nation. I have the Oregon Ducks with the best secondary in the Pac-12. This is an active unit that is always flying around the ball and taking advantage of the opportunities that are created by their front seven. 
Any errant pass does not hit the ground versus Oregon. The Oregon State Beavers excel in the special teams department. Kicker Trevor Romain was a first-team All-Pac-12 performer last year, and punter Keith Costell does a great job in downing punts inside the 20. When we look at running back Terran Ward, he averaged 22 and a half yards of kickoff return, giving them a well-rounded special teams core. Brett Huntley gets my vote as offensive MVP in his second year as a starter. Here's a guy that could put up some huge numbers and get some Heisman Trophy consideration. I like about Scott Crichton out of Oregon State. Here's a guy that has gotten better each and every year and does a great job in playing both sides of defense. That's the running game as well as getting to the quarterback. Rookies of the year in the Pac-12. A look at the USC Trojans freshman duo in the secondary, Leon McQuay and Sua Cravens. Both guys have an excellent opportunity to start, and both are impact-type players. I couldn't settle on one pro prospect, so I'm going to give you three. I look at Anthony Barr out of UCLA. Here's a guy that's still learning the outside linebacker position. He's already a good one. DeAnthony Thomas out of Oregon. You put the football in his hands, and it's a touchdown waiting to happen. He has that speed to take the distance. And Will Sutton, we talked about him earlier. Very impressive defensive tackle prospect, a guy that can't collapse the pocket. The UCLA Bruins have the toughest schedule in the Pac-12 this year. You look at their road schedule at Nebraska, who really wants revenge after the game last season. They have to travel to Utah, Stanford, Oregon, Arizona, and wrap up the season at USC. That's a very tough slate for a team that's looking to get help along that offensive line. They're going to have to win a lot of these big games on the road if they want to get to a Pac-12 championship. Let's start in the Pac-12 North. I have the Washington State Huskies finishing sixth in the North Division. The reason for optimism, defensively, they play better than the numbers would indicate. So there's hope that this unit, which has nine returning starters, will continue to improve this season. Free safety, Dion Buchanan is a pretty good ball player as well. And on offense, I'm a big fan of their receiving core with Gabe Marks leading the way. And Juco transfer Vince Mail is already being penciled in as a starter. Now the cause for concern, the offensive line play has to improve by leaps and bounds this season. That unit caused a lot of ineptness in the running game as well as a lot of sacks. You look at quarterback Connor Holiday, he must cut down on the turnovers this year as well. And I believe Leach will have to find ways to be productive running the football that's a big key they got to find some way to be balanced in order to have some success now the first two weeks of the season are at Auburn and at USC so we'll learn a lot about the Cougars right off the bat next up we have the Cal Golden Bears and a reason for optimism offensively new head coach Sonny Dykes will help jumpstart this offensive attack and he has the ideal running back for his offense to go in a super explosive Brendan Bigelow the receiving core is still very talented despite losing Keenan Allen and look for both Bryce Triggs and Chris Harper to put up some big numbers this year. Defensively, I'm a big fan of their interior defensive line with defensive tackle DeAndre Coleman and cornerback Stephen McClure. Getting him back at 100% is huge for the secondary. Now, the cause for concern, the quarterback position is still unsettled with three guys, mostly freshmen, vying for their starting job behind an inexperienced offensive line, and that could cause some concern early. The secondary, while they have promised, they're still a question mark as they lose key contributors on the back end. They have a tough early season non-conference game with Ohio State as well as Northwestern, but I do believe this is a team that will be headed in the right direction because I believe Sonny Dykes is a very good coach. Coming in fourth place, I have the Washington Huskies and a reason for optimism. Quarterback Keith Price and that offensive line will have bounce back campaigns. The Huskies are also armed with great talent at the skill positions with wide receiver Casey Williams, tight end Austin Severian Jenkins, and 1,400-yard rusher Bishop Sankey. The defense was atrocious in 2011 and got better last year, and this will be their second year in the system, and it could yield good results. They're very athletic and versatile at the linebacker position. The cause for concern, when you look at both sides of the line of scrimmage, you can have some question marks about this Huskies football team. The defensive line must consistently get physical and productive. And the offensive line, while gaining the experience last year, they have to protect better. And they're going to get a huge test in week one as they open up versus the Boise State Broncos. But you can't deny the fact that this will be an exciting offense and they will put up a lot of points.
Next, we have the Oregon State Beavers and the reason for optimism. This is a very solid football team. And in my opinion, what makes this team go is what they do in the trenches on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Sophomore running back Storm Woods is 100% and should break the 1,000-yard barrier. Wide receiver Brandon Cooks averaged 17 yards of catch and a solid all-around defense led by all Pac-12 performer, defensive end Scott Crichton and Dylan Wynn. Those two guys can really get after the quarterback. And the cause for concern, the Beavers are still playing with two quarterbacks and Cody Voss and Sean Mannion. That can kill continuity and also consistency. On defense, they'll be dependent on two JUCO defensive tackles to step in right away and play well. Replacing Jordan Poirier at the cornerback position is also a tough task. They also have a huge road test in September. They have to travel to Utah as well as San Diego State, but I still believe Mike Riley, well-coached football team, will be a tough out for opponents each and every week. In second place, I have the Oregon Ducks and a reason for optimism. Oregon may have the fastest team both offensively and defensively in the country. Nine starters return on offense that average 49 points a game. And on defense, they're stout and they have the talent up front and the secondary returns all four starters led by cornerback Ifo Ekpre Alomo. And they also play very good special teams. Now the cause for concern, the linebackers are a slight question mark in my opinion. They lost some key playmakers at that position, i.e. Kiko Alonso. And there's also a slight concern with the loss of Chip Kelly, the head coach. And there's going to be a lot of youth depth-wise on offense, so they can't afford any injuries. The young guys will have to step up and earn their stripes. But they have a favorable schedule, so they can get a lot of those young guys playing time very early. And this is a team that could push for not only an undefeated season, but find themselves pushing for a national championship bid. And in first place in the North Division of the Pac-12, I have the Stanford Cardinal. Reason for optimism, David Shaw is one heck of a football coach, and Stanford plays a good brand of football. They run downhill, and they play physical defense. And it's that defense, in my opinion, that gives you plenty of optimism this season. Nine starters return, and they are solid, and they're deep at every level. Offensively, All-American guard David Yankee leads a talented offensive line, and they go four deep at the running back position. Now, the cause for concern, while imposing up front, Offensively, in a running game, the Cardinals lack the explosiveness in their passing attack, coupled with the fact that they must replace their top three receiving options. They're going to go with the next man up mentality at wide receiver and tight end. But what I like about Stanford, like I said before, they can run the football, play physical defense, and they have talent on the defensive side. They also play sound special teams. That's going to win you a lot of ball games, and this is a very dangerous team in 2013. Let's move over to the Pac-12 South, and starting in the sixth spot, I have the Colorado Buffaloes, and a reason for optimism, new head coach Mike McIntyre is an excellent hire, and offensively, he'll be making the transition easier with a very solid offensive line. Four out of the five starters return up front, and there's also a lot of promise at wide receiver with Paul Richardson returning from injury and freshman Jeff Thomas. Defensively, defensive end Shadera Uzo Deribe led the team in sacks last year with seven, and cornerback Greg Henderson is a stud. They also have a very solid core of linebackers, big fan of what they have at the second level of their defense. Not a cause for concern. Quarterback play will once again be the key to offensive success. Connor Wood has to be ready for the challenge, and a defensive line has to play better. 5.9 yards of carry given up to opponents on the ground won't cut it, and they have to find a way to get to the quarterback. That's crucial in the Pac-12. Now, the Buffaloes have the right guy at the helm in McIntyre, but maybe two years away from making some serious noise in the Pac-12. Next up, we have the Utah Utes and the reason for optimism. A solid coaching staff in place already, and they got better with the addition of Dennis Erickson. That gives the optimism to the offensive side of the football, and the Utes always have done well in replacing players on defense. So while the losses of Lotalele and Kruger and both cornerbacks will hurt, it won't stink as much as people expect it to. The passing game looks to have a breakout year as sophomore quarterback Travis Wilson behind a very good offensive line should lead to better play. Now, the cause for concern is an inconsistency at the wide receiver position as well as the loss of running back John White. To me, that's more important than any other loss on offense. Now, defensively, they'll be able to adapt, in my opinion, but offensively is what I believe could hold them back this season. Coming in third, I have the Arizona Wildcats and the reason for optimism. The Wildcats have the nation's leading rusher returning in the backfield in Kadeem Carey, who's looking across the 2,000-yard barrier, and he'll get his chances as they're breaking in a new quarterback, and he's running behind a very good and veteran offensive line. They're young and talented at the wide receiver. Keep an eye on redshirt freshman Trey Griffey, the son of former Major League Baseball slugger Ken Griffey Jr. Now, this is year two in the system, so they should have some success, and I also love their defensive backs with Shaquille Richardson and Jonathan McKnight. Now, calls for concern, losing leading wide receiver Austin Hill 
in the spring definitely hurts as well as the inexperience at the quarterback position. Like I mentioned before, experience on D with 11 starters returning, but this is one of the worst defenses statistically in the country. Can they go from terrible to average? That's going to be a big leap. And if so, the Wildcats definitely have a favorable schedule to push for eight wins once again. Next up, we have the USC Trojans and the reason for optimism. USC will be very exciting on defense this year, especially in the front seven. Moving to a 50 front will put more guys that can collapse a pocket on the field. Breslin, Kennard, defensive tackle Leonard Williams are studs. And keep an eye on two true freshmen in the secondary that could see time in Sua Cravens and Leon McQuay the third. Offensively, they have a game break and wide receiver Marquise Lee and solid skill players as a whole with running back Solace Red and tight end Xavier Grimble. And they also returned five starters along that offensive line, which is huge. Now the cause for concern is quarterback Max Wittick ready for the spotlight and replacing Matt Barkley will be tough. And there's some legit questions in the secondary, mostly on the corners. And they lost a lot in the offseason and the jury is still out on Lane Kiffin as well. But a good first month of the season, the schedule looks very nice and they can get on the roll and push for a Pac-12 South Division crown. Coming in second place, I have the UCLA Bruins and a reason for optimism. Coach Moore did a great job in year one and has a bevy of talent at his disposal. Defensively, the front seven is punishing despite losing to Tone Jones. They'll still be able to be solid. You look at linebacker Anthony Barr, he may be the best linebacker in the country. On offense, quarterback Brett Huntley could push for All-American honors this year. And up front, they played a lot of freshmen last season. And now they're more experienced, led by All-American guard Xavier Suat Filo. Now, the cause for concern, losing running back Jonathan Franklin and tight end Joseph Fourier. It's a big blow to the offense. And outside of Shaq Evans at wide receiver, they're depending on a ton of youth at that position. The same is also being counted on in the secondary as well, losing both of their starting quarterbacks. The Bruins also have a very tough schedule at Nebraska, Stanford, Oregon, Utah, USC. That's a very tough schedule, but I do believe they have the defense, especially in the front seven and the quarterback to get themselves through it. I like what I see this year from the Bruins. And finally, coming in first place, we have the Arizona State Sun Devils and a reason for optimism. The Sun Devils will stockpile with talent on both sides of the ball. Quarterback Taylor Kelly did an impressive job last year as a sophomore. as a versatile combination in the backfield with Grice and Foster. Underrated tight end and Chris Coyle. And the interior offensive line is tough, and they're also tough on that defensive line as well, led by NFL prospect Will Sutton. Linebacker Carl Bradford does a good job in solidifying that front seven making it easy for the back end. Now, the cause for concern, brutal first month of the season. That schedule is tough, and outside of tight end coil, there's a lot to be desired at wide receiver. They're going to have to step up, so keep an eye on Juco transfer. Jalen Strong, 6'4", 205 pounds. He can come in and step in from day one and be a contributor. But overall, this will be the second year in Ty Graham's system, and I think the Sun Devils right now are primed for a BCS bowl bid.